Hi, hello, my name's Ollie and this is Book Draw. For those of you who don't know what Book Draw is, it's just uh, I enjoy making images out of queer fiction. <laughs> so I've been away for a couple of weeks because I've been on holiday. Um, so forgive me for not being creating, um, uploading. Uh, so the book that I'm reviewing today is by Sarah um, Farzan and it's uh, If You Could Be Mine. Uh, I absolutely fell in love with this story. I thought it was brilliant. Uh, it's based in Iran. Also uh, predominantly features a lesbian character called Sahara and um, she is in love with her best friend called Nazrin. Um, and it focuses through the lens of Sahara, um, it's a first person story and it gives you a wonderful um, understanding of the kind of difference and richness of the culture of uh, Iran and where she lives, um, but in, uh, also all the kind of pitfalls and struggles that she's facing as someone who is, uh, identifies as a lesbian woman. So Sahara is um, deeply in love with Nazrin and um, uh, she thinks that she kind of knows that something will eventually prevent them from being together because their entire relationship is in secret but it kind of is thrown fast forward when it turns out that Nazrin is going to be um, uh, soon to be married to another man. Uh, this then makes um, Sahara have to really grapple with the fact that she could potentially be losing Nazrin and um, she tries to identify a way in which they can be together and through um, <laughs> going to a party and meeting her uh, first transgendered woman, um, Parveen, um, she discovers that there is a possibility that she could legitimately be with Nazrin uh, by um, having a um, gender reassignment, which sounds massively extreme, um, uh, especially from the, the West, but um, in terms of over in Iran, it's actually more socially acceptable to um, be transgendered than it is to uh, want to be with someone of the same sex. So. Um, and part of that, I think, is because uh, in terms of the the, um, the state and religion are joined in terms of uh, from previous revolution, um, and that has made certain laws um, a lot more stricter, and the penalties against them are really extreme. I mean, in terms of the background to um, the fear and tension that uh, Sahara is feeling is that right at the start of the book, she describes how. There was a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old um, pair of guys who were uh, hung for being gay. And that's rooted in truth, that that actually happened. And I'll show a picture in terms of just, I think it's really important to display. These two young guys were killed because of their sexuality, and that was the crime. And so some of that labelling and the way the extremes that they will go to enforce that um, kind of law, for me, feels really extreme and really horrible in terms of uh, myself as a gay man, I could be killed just for loving other men. And um, so that is the backdrop, that's the reality of what she's facing. She could be killed. If uh, Sahara was even just to continue having an affair with Nazrin once she was married, the penalty for that could be being stoned to death. So not great options uh, for her. However, silver lining, she could change her um, physical identity from a woman to a man and then, as a man, she could try and um, marry Nazarene before she gets married. But that's like her only kind of uh, <laughs> option that she can see. It is, uh, it is against the law for people of the same sex to fall in love and be together. Um, that makes it an entirely perceivable option for some people that they might want to go down that route in order to be together. It, it really is much of a focus on uh, her relationship with Nazarene as a woman, um, but also as a best friend, and you get the sense that Sahara is really sheltered and isolated because it's all secret and coded, um, uh, though her cousin is aware, and um, later on uh, other characters kind of reveal that they have an awareness, uh, which you can kind of understand in given the circumstances that it's illegal to behave like that. Um, so there is this kind of mask or 
and veiled perception of how a person will present themselves and not be their most authentic self because by law they have to be that way, they have to be concealed and they have to be hidden. Alongside uh, th those aspects it also uh, touches on other areas in terms of just the cultural differences and uh, I mean it goes from small things like drinking a cup of tea so in terms of very traditional English way it might be to drink it with a slice of lemon or a bit of milk um, but in terms of uh, in Iran uh, you'd hold the, the sugar cube in your mouth and, and that would provide the sweetener as you drink the tea which I thought was kind of a great idea <laughs> apart from all the hidden calories but quite like that, a sugar cube in your mouth um, I mean the wonderful part of the story as well is the food that it talks about and it only kind of touches on the names and the context of the food but it, it led me to Google a lot of them, I'll probably like put a couple of pictures or something alongside me um, so you can just see some of the different foods which I totally want to just like spend a week having Iranian food and try lots of different uh, recipes. So in, in terms of for Sahara, she is trying to find this way of hooking up with Nazrin and so she does that through um, befriending Paveen who um, takes her along to a, a close group of um, people who are transgendered, transitioning or wanting to uh, transition. And that's her kind of gateway into that world and what's really interesting about that is it provides several different lenses um, in terms of voicing their motives um, and uh, how they identify as individuals and um, and it helps grapple with the reasons why they want to transition um, which is very complicated and I, I like the fact that uh, it, it did give several voices um, uh, Farazan did, uh, does give several voices within that dialogue so I actually wrote this while she was uh, on the um, tail end of her uh, university course and she wrote it initially not thinking that she would ever be publishing it, it was just something that she wanted to do. She was writing it as a, uh, an own voice. She was very explicit in a talk which I add as a link below saying this is just a story, it's not everybody's story, it's not, um, and she's very aware of her being uh, someone who's kind of grown up in America, didn't really spend any time in Iran either, and she's also aware of how the voices within the book, um, I mean this is predominantly a lesbian novel, uh, a, love, a lesbian love story, but it does um, uh, highlight some of the uh, trans related issues, um, and she's very aware that she doesn't want to be claiming a voice on them, um, and I think she did a, a pretty reasonable job of it. What I also thought was really smart about this book as well is in terms of every part that it references um, the Quran, um, it only does so in terms of its legal impact. So it's not kind of, um, uh, it's not bashing religion in any way, it's just demonstrating the impact of combining law with religion and how that's impacted on other people's lives such as the two kids who got hung, but it does touch on those issues when you combine religion with the state and how those laws can alter the entire lives of people there. And she, I mean, she talks about how before the um, uprising there were people in bikinis and that's all Nazarene's actually interested in because now they're all fully clothed and, um, and not able to reveal any part of their bodies and why um, the the person who wants to transition is supported because there's nothing written in the Quran which goes against it. Um, and that creates direct conflict with people within the trans community and people within um, who uh, love someone of the same sex uh, in, in this book. So, um, in general, I just highly recommend her as a, a writer, someone who you're going to be captivated by. Yeah, I just highly enjoyed it. I think that's probably enough for me for now. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. You can check me out on uh, Twitter and Instagram uh, for images and um, for uh, general quotes around the, um, the work. Um, you can check me out on Facebook for that. If you want to contribute, if you've got some uh, LGBT fiction, queer fiction that you're interested in, you want to share, please share it with me. Um, tag it, uh, me in it and upload it. I use the hashtag book draw. It'd be great to see you participating in it. Bye. Subscribe.